Hello. Before I begin reading this week's column, I want to explain something. The nature of the teaching of history may seem like an arcane subject given all the things that are going on in the world. It may seem dubious to consider it to be important. I'm a history teacher. It's my vocation to understand why the teaching of history is central to the way that we think about ourselves. And I don't just mean we as individuals, I mean that the institutions of our culture and society, if you want to understand why Western civilization is under pernicious attack everywhere, by every institution, the guardians of our culture are intending to attack and destroy our culture. One of the main answers has to do with the way history is taught and has been taught for generations. So as you consider this column and whether or not it's worth your time, think about that. Because to me, the teaching of history and changing it and reforming it to what it should be that which helps acculturate coming generations is quite centrally important to this culture war that we're in. Thank you. Keep right with Ralph K. Genorio, Man and History. Our world is filled with authoritative people who preach a gospel of personal insignificance. We cannot fight City Hall, they say asserting that we must each succumb to the inevitable. Some seem to do so out of love. Family and friends do not want us to be ground under the proverbial tank treads of historical necessity for making a quixotic stand against an overwhelming power. However, in academe, learned professors damn the great man theory of history. Instead, they contend that the real drivers of history are impersonal socioeconomic mass movements. Individuals may ride the waves of history, but no individual ever really makes a difference. To them, one spokesman for a mass movement is as good as any other. This assault on the historical significance of any individual is a siren song of despair. It kills initiative, stifles courage, and inevitably brings defeat. While masquerading as compromise, it is actually advocating surrender. Be not beguiled by their blandishments. These would-be political thought leaders assert that we need not think for ourselves. Instead, they advise us to focus on discerning these socioeconomic trends and then reshaping our thoughts, words, and deeds in conformity with the mass. In other words, the individual should not lead. The individual <clears throat> should slavishly follow. Such a reflexive ideological servility would amplify the influence of those very cognoscenti who purport to represent historical necessity. Such leaders need never abandon their own distinct personalities. Instead, cults of personality always grow up around these self-appointed avatars of the collective will. This appeal to a desperate communitarianism quite intentionally undermines any hope that a single individual can ever positively change the world. Any person who is bereft of hope is sundered from their very humanity. They are ripe for slavery. Every one of us should cultivate personal sensibilities about right and wrong, good and evil, and about what we should support and what we must oppose. Our best destiny is to become a person of good character and steely integrity. The key to doing this without becoming a fanatic is to embrace an honest humility. 
No cherished belief of ours should be beyond honest criticism. No beloved dogma of ours should be unquestionable. No groupthink of ours should ever be abided. History is most certainly not defined by mass movements of impersonal socioeconomic forces. That was the conceit of the great deceiver Karl Marx. Individuals make history. Consider these few examples, not widely taught in today's woke school curricula. Zoroaster, Abraham, Prince Gautama, the Buddha, Moses, Confucius, Jesus, Mani, Mohammed, Luther, Calvin, and Marx all changed the world for better or worse with their original ideas about the meaning of human life. Pheidippides ran the first great marathon, preventing an Athenian surrender to what seemed to be an inevitable per Persian victory, thus allowing Western civilization to be properly born. Alexander the Great began the fusing of Eastern and Western thought that, with the insights and efforts of St. Paul, culminated in a Hellenized Christianity, which blends European Greek philosophy and Asiatic Jewish notions of God. Augustus ended Rome's civil wars and its republic, initiating a stable empire that forms a basis for all subsequent Western governments. Charlemagne revived hope for a resurgent Christian West in the midst of the Dark Ages. St. Francis of Assisi, St. Dominic, St. Thomas Aquinas, Martin Luther, John Calvin, St. Ignatius of Loyola, Menno Simmons, and John Wesley all reformed Christianity. John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau inspired our founding fathers to risk their all for the hope of freedom. Only George Washington's choices saved our republic from becoming a theocracy, a monarchy, or a president-for-life dictatorship. Attila, Genghis Khan, Tamerlane, Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin, and Mao all murdered millions to serve their vainglorious ambitions. Admiral John Arbuthnot Fisher, Air Marshal Sir Hugh Dowdig, and General Curtis LeMay all made possible the free world's victories by respectively strengthening Britain's World War I Royal Navy, Britain's World War II Royal Air Force, and the United States' Cold War Strategic Air Command. Winston Churchill personally saved the West, really saved the whole world, by going against conventional wisdom and refusing to surrender to Hitler in the summer of 1940. Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, <clears throat> Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Ronald Reagan, and Donald Trump each redefined the United States for better or for worse. Leo Tolstoy, Mohandas Gandhi, and Martin Luther King Jr. all defeated the powers of compulsion with the power of conscience. No, learned professor, real human history does not resemble your mass theory. Each of us has the capacity to change our world for the better. In fact, we do so every single day. Reject their siren song of despair. And thank you.